very much. Thank you. Very much. Yes, you do. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. John, thank you very much for that introduction, for your leadership of the Fleet Reserve Association, and a special thanks to your team for partnering with VA and hosting today's ceremony. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Ranking Member Takano, teammates among the cabinet members, most importantly, all the veterans, your families, caregivers, and survivors, good morning. In all of America, there is no place more sacred than the ground we stand on today here in Arlington and across our country's national and state veteran cemeteries. Here lie in eternal rest presidents and privates, five-star generals, Medal of Honor recipients, and anonymous heroes known but to God. There are veterans from every American war since the Revolution, including veterans of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan buried in Section 60. Every new grave dug, every benediction murmured, every tear shed, every solemn commitment to this hallowed ground tells the story of our nation's history. Yet as I look around, I see something else too. I see friends, loved ones, family members of veterans, some sitting next to their veteran, holding hands, grateful for their presence. Others here to mourn their lost loved one, buried within these sacred hills overlooking our nation's capital. As John just said, military and veteran family members may not wear a uniform, but their courage and sacrifice are profound and worthy of our admir admiration. Military families endure the hardships of long deployments and training exercises without their loved ones. They pick up their lives and move across the country, even across the globe when their service member gets a new assignment. They selflessly care for the injured or ill service member or veteran when they're unable to care for themselves. So we're here today to honor them as well. I'm thinking of veteran family members like Angela Bell. Angela's son, Sean, served 20 years in the Army and died by suicide in 2021. Angela, Angela has dedicated her life to helping other families avoid that same devastation. I'm thinking of Cindy and Lee Stover, who have cared for their son, Joe, a Navy veteran, since he was partially paralyzed after a traumatic brain injury. Cindy and Lee show that veteran caregivers are heroes, too. I'm thinking of Danny Ingram, Marine veteran, husband to a fellow Marine, Staff Sergeant Eric Alva, the first Marine ser seriously injured in the Iraq War. Danny fights for all veterans and family members, saying that, like so many military spouses, I do what I can to be supportive of someone who's not only my love, but also my hero. I'm thinking of Ellen Gustafson, wife of an active duty Navy SEAL, Ellen brings together veterans and military family members to volunteer as poll workers, strengthening our nation and its democracy through public service. I'm thinking of Jeremy Hilton, Navy veteran, and Air, Navy veteran and Air Force spouse. Jeremy has found a new mission, advocating for military children with special needs. And I'm thinking of family members like VA's Deputy Secretary Tanya Bradshaw. Army combat vet, spouse, daughter, granddaughter of combat veterans. An example of the shared family value of service that is so often passed down from one generation to another. Of course, we have another strong military family in attendance today. The surviving mother and father of Iraq combat vet, Major Bo Biden. President Biden and Dr. Biden have been unrelenting in their advocacy for veterans and their families. President Biden has spent his entire career fighting like hell for veterans, 
just as he charged me and my VA teammates to do four years ago. He con has continuously demanded that VA deliver more care and more benefits to more vets than ever before. Mr. President, thank you for your no-nonsense, frequently personally delivered in unmistakable fashion. Demand that VA take care of vets. Thank you for reminding us that we still have so much work to do. And thank you for always, always keeping the faith. With that, it is my great privilege and my profound honor to introduce the 46th President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a great honor to be standing here again. Over 160 years ago, during what would become his final days in office, President Abraham Lincoln addressed this nation, and he said, let us strive on to finish the work we're in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle. My fellow Americans, First Lady, Vice President Harris, and Second Gentlemen, Secretary Blinken, Austin, McDonough, Mayorkas, Chairman Brown, most importantly, our veterans, service members, and their families. I've said it many times before. I got in trouble for saying when I was a young senator, I said, we have many obligations, but only one truly sacred obligation, sacred, to prepare those we send into harm's way and to care for them and their families when they return home and when they don't. It's an obligation, not based on party or politics, but on a promise that unites us all. And today, as we strive on to finish the work of our moment, to bind the nation's wounds once again, we commit and recommit to this sacred vow. This is the last time I will stand here at Arlington as Commander-in-Chief. It's been the greatest honor of my life to lead you, to serve you, to care for you, to defend you, just as you defended us generation after generation after generation. You are the greatest fighting force, and this is not hyperbole, the finest fighting force in the history of the world. I'll never forget standing at Valley Forge, where our nation's first soldiers laid down their lives to deliver a nation where everyone is entitled to inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. And I'll never forget walking the hills of Gettysburg, where thousands more shed their blood to make those words real. I'll never forget in Bellow Woods, visiting there to pay tribute to the heroes who stepped on that beach or standing in the cliffs of Normandy 80 years after D-Day to honor the service members and veterans who literally saved the world with absolute heroism. Just standing there, you wonder how in God's name did they have the courage to do what they did. I'll never forget visiting bases in Korea where America's sons and daughters answers a call to defend the people they had never met, for paying my respects in Hanoi, where so many of our troops defended democracy, including my friend and once worked for me, John, Senator John McCain. I'll never forget my trips to Afghanistan and Iraq, where tour after tour, young men and women served and sacrificed to keep our nation safe. 
Four presidents faced a decision after we had gotten bin Laden whether to end our longest war in history in Afghanistan. I was determined not to leave it to the fifth. Every day, I still carry a card with me, my schedule every single day for the last 10 years. On the back of my schedule, it says, U.S. daily troops in Afghanistan. U.S. troops died in Afghanistan as of today, 2,465. Troops wounded in Afghanistan, 20,769. U.S. troops, Iraq, died in Iraq, 4,620. Wounded in Iraq, 32,766. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my duty as president, but also as a parent. Like many of you, our son, Bo Biden, deployed to Iraq for a year with the Delaware National Guard. I still remember the day he asked me to pin his bars on him. He stood ramrod straight, how proud Jill and I and our entire family felt. But like so many of you, we also remember how hard it was when he was deployed. Empty seats at the dinner table. Missed holidays and birthdays, prayers of hope and worry, repeated every morning and every night. Just as we ask everything of our veterans, we ask everything of their families. The English poet John Milton wrote, and I quote, they also serve who only stand and wait, as so many of you have. So for all the military families, to all those with a loved one still missing or unaccounted for, to all Americans, Grieving the loss of a loved one who wore the uniform, Jill and I want you to know we see you, we thank you, and we'll never stop working to meet our sacred obligation to you and your families. Jill and I, Doug and Kamala, our entire administration, are proud of our work for the past four years. Together, we passed more than 30 bipartisan laws to support our veterans and their families, caregivers and survivors. We brought veterans' homelessness down to a record low. We delivered more benefits to more veterans than any ever before in VA history. We invested record resources to reduce the scourge of veteran vice to suicide. We took action to protect veterans from scams because no veteran should be defrauded by those defended. they defended. All these actions are vital, but I'm particularly proud of finally passing the PACT Act. This is the most significant law in our history, our nation's history, to help millions of veterans who are exposed to toxins like Agent Orange and burn pits during their military service, pits the size of football fields that incinerated the wastes of war, tires, chemicals, batteries, jet fuel, and so much more. Pits that left too many veterans with headaches, numbness, dizziness, asthma, and cancer. The PACT Act has already helped over one million veterans and their families get the benefits they deserve. They deserve those benefits. And today, I'm proud to announce that the VA will expand the number of cancers covered under the PACT Act. And to all veterans who served at K-2 Air Base in Uzbekistan, constantly surrounded by toxins, we want to honor you. We want to have your back, just like we did in Agent Orange, just like we're going to rule to make sure you don't have to prove your illness as a consequence of your service, which is often too hard to do. God willing, we will make sure that any rare condition you've developed is covered. And we're committed to getting this rule in place by the end of my term. Folks, this matters. Too many of our nation's veterans have served only to return home to suffer from permanent effects of poisonous chemicals. Too many have died 
like our son Bo and Sar like Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, for whom the PACT Act was named. A couple years ago, after I signed the PACT Act, I handed a pen to his daughter, Braley. She and her mom are with us today. I don't know where you are, but God love you. There they are. Stand up, ladies. And give me a word, I mean this. I'll never forget, after I handed the signing pen, that beautiful young lady who lost her whole world, she held the pen in her hand, and she looked at me and she said, thank you. Thank you for my daddy. God love you, honey. God love you. But I don't think she was just thanking me. She was thanking all of you here, all of us, everyone who fought hard and came together to keep our promise to our veterans, to keep the faith. My fellow Americans, we stand here today. We think about all that our veterans have given to our nation, serving and sacrificing in uniform, just as they serve and sacrifice here at home, as educators, firefighters, law enforcement officers, construction workers, entrepreneurs, business leaders, doctors, nurses, <coughs> elected leaders, and so much more. And just as routinely, they routinely put aside differences to work together, this is the moment. This is the moment to come together as a nation, to keep faith in each other. The world is dependent on each of you and all of us, all of you, to keep honoring the women and the men and the families who have borne the battle, to keep protecting everything they fought for, to keep striving to heal our nation's wounds, to keep perfecting our union. We're the only nation in the world built on an idea. Every other nation is based on things like geography, ethnicity, religion. But we're the only nation, the only in the world, built on an idea. And that idea is we're all created equal, deserve to be created equal throughout our lives. We haven't lived up to it every time, but we've never walked away from it. Even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. And today, standing together to honor those Americans who have dared all, risked all, and given all to our nation, we must say clearly, we never will give up. God bless our veterans and their families. And may God protect our troops today and always. God love you. Thank you so much. <laughs>